Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of This Game Wear, episode 8, with me, Ashley. And me, Chris. Today I've got the privilege of bringing the game to the party, and Chris Good. has got the privilege of playing it. Is it a privilege? I hope it is a privilege. It will be a privilege. Thank you for You're gonna, You are going to really enjoy this game. Good. Thank you for bringing the game as well, because that's kind of important. That is kind of important, yeah. Some of us know our roles. So what's the game? Fill me in. It is this game where you take control of one of four members of a famous American family. Spinal mm. Tap. Spinal Spin- family, are they? Spinal Tap? Yeah. No. What's the first thing that's thrown to mind, bizarrely? No. Not that at all. That's right, the, the game. One of four members. One of four members of a famous American family... And you beat your way through oh. countless colourful characters to rescue the family's kidnapped baby from a famous local energy mogul. King of the Hill. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Are you serious? No, of course I'm not. I hope not. Family guy. No, are you still serious? Deadly serious. Jesus Christ. Mork and Mindy. <laughs> you're not. You're hurting me on now, are you? Third drop from the sun. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, What's our third drop from the Sun game? No, I don't think so. Would have been alright though, wouldn't it? John Lithgow? What would you have done with the third drop from the Sun game? Had them land and infiltrate. Infiltrate? Yep. (laughs) That's what they did. Like (laughs) XCOM. Yeah. Just like that with John Lithgow. (laughs) Okay. And the man with the strange voice. I'd definitely play that. Yeah. Who is he? Did he ever do anything else? I don't know. It's the only thing I've ever seen him in. Yeah. But there was Joseph Gordon Levitt, wasn't there? There was. Yeah. Yeah, I've forgotten that. Is that where he started, or did he get a start before that? I'd like to say that's where he first started, but I'm prepared to accept that he may have been in things prior to that. Yeah, possibly. I do like Joseph Gordon a bit. Yeah, I quite good. like him as well. Yeah, he's a good egg. And how how do we do this to ourselves? We have literally got past the. You not said the game yet? No, I haven't said the game. I'm just because... trying to think of other families with a baby. Are you really serious? You don't know which. Family, I'm talking. Of course, about. I do, but I'm just trying well, to choose. Okay, cool. Okay, so, so not obviously, being... it's going to do The Simpsons. Yeah, fantastic. One of my favourite shows ever. It was the first Simpsons game ever made. Is it the Simpsons arcade game? Yes, oh, it is. Thumbza. Yeah. So, do you know the Simpsons yes, arcade game? Yes, I do. Excellent. So, what's your knowledge? What do you know? Presumably, you played. It, it was in an arcade. It was in an arcade. At least one. Yeah. It... I imagine <laughs> it was in quite a few. <laughs> I think at least two, if you've been more in one. Than, more than two? More than two, maybe. Wow. Mm. So, did you play it? It came out in 1991. Did you play it around then? Or? So, was that Simpsons? No, I should know this, because I am, I am quite a Simpsons fan. Was it 1990 it started, or 1991? This is a good question. I think it was 1990. It was 1990. We're in August 2019, Series 31 is about to start, right. so you could do the math. I'm no, you don't need to. I'm telling you, it, is, it was 1990. Okay. So, this is the first Simpsons game ever made. There's been a few, hasn't there? They have now, yeah. To lesser or that's not a good sentence. There, there's been some good ones, but we can yeah, come back some to that. Ones, the, this game was made after the first series, which was... I didn't know that at the time that mm. I was playing it, but... Uh, so, it much was, it's quite brash, because that's what the first series was. Well, and I, the characters were quite... Like, if you look, if you watch a yeah, series they, one episode, yeah. now, Lisa is basically bars. Oh, I never picked up on that. I'd have well, to... I'm going to rephrase that slightly. That's my catchphrase. I'm going to rephrase that slightly. I'd keep saying that. Lisa is much less developed than yeah, she Yeah, they is. all are, aren't they? They're... She's just like... If you think about the episode where they go to the um, electroshock therapy with Dr. Munro. Yes. Yeah. And Lisa... What was that called? Do you know? Because you I are very... Top, off the top of my head, I can't remember... No. And it's going to be one where when we research it for the footnotes, I'm going to say, yes, of course it is. I, I really can't remember. But Lisa, I can remember she electrocutes them. You know, she electrocutes the members of the yeah. family. If you went forward even just three she years after that, she was that tall, would she? No, I don't think so. No, maybe, maybe a brother. There was a really good Treehouse of Horror segment uh, about three years ago where they got a Treehouse of Horror episodes where they go off and do weird and wonderful yeah. things. There's one coming up in... The current series, 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 this one where they're doing a Stranger Things parody. Which I oh, is... yeah, saw that coming. Yeah, have they done the Game of Thrones parody? Yes, they have. They did the whole yeah. episode of the Game of Thrones. So I'm not keeping up with. And as something. someone who has never watched Game of Thrones, that hard episode was completely lost on me. Yeah, that's yeah. the danger, I suppose. It is. It, they do date. You, you go back to series 
12 or 13, there's an episode where um, it was Triassic Horror again, where Xena Warrior Princess was in it. Oh, yeah. Who's going to know that now? <sighs> exactly. What was I saying? Lisa. But did you know? Triassic Horror segment. Oh, yeah. They're very brash, you said. There's, there's, one, so, there's the, a Triassic Horror segment where they meet Series 1 equivalent to themselves. Yeah. That I actually really know that one. Yeah, that I was, remember that, that one. Was good. So, for anyone that hasn't picked up already, Chris is somewhat encyclopedic when it comes to The Simpsons. Maybe not encyclopedic, but he certainly knows them the whole thing better than I do. There are people who know it much, much better than me. The I idea that you that, could but... name an episode, to me, is really? ridiculous. I couldn't call... I couldn't tell you what the names of episodes are. I could probably name most of them from sort of, I would say, series... Apart from the one we've question, obviously, which is a bit of an irrelevant... Uh, series one to about maybe eight. Okay, I had so, the I had the episode books that I used to read cover to cover. If I said to you the this is good note taking, I like this. If you're gonna like say name an episode, and I'm gonna yeah yeah I am. Oh, okay. this is exciting. Uh, Homer's night out. <laughs> Apart from that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. What happens in that one? He has a night out. No idea. Do you want a fact about that related yes. to the game? So Princess Cashmere. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, so let me tell, me tell you the fact verse. So, Princess Kashmir, the lead dancer from Homer's Night Out, appears on stage at Moe's Dancing to Music, performed by Bleeding Gums Murphy in the game. Nice. If Homer stands next to the stage, he'll start to do his victory dance. That's a good little, little self-referential bit of game knowledge. That's... What about... Oh, I thought you were applauding my... Oh, you're, that's good research, but the fact that that happens in the game is, is linking to the yes, show. That's is, really yeah. good. And uh, what I, where this started was, this is this game was made after the first series. Mm. It has only the first series to go on. And you said about them being quite brash, but actually the look of the characters in the here, t- in this game, to me, they feel like the characters of post-series one. They're not, they're not that s- sketchy, ropey mm-hmm. animation that the, the Simpsons knows existed themselves because you yes. said about they brought them back yeah. in the Treehouse of Horror and Homer has the deeper voice yeah he does a lot more gruff and they all feel a little bit I'll, I'll tell you one of the things that I do remember from the very early series when they're pulling faces at each other Homer uh, Bart and, and Lisa and they pull that, the thing with his lower lip yeah he put, and yeah. she does it back to him and it just looks completely gruesome gross like my daughter does that does she really she's four and she does that yeah. like that very similar, yeah. yeah. I'll show you probably, during probably, the She's probably not animated quite in the same way, though, is she? I don't think she's animated. Mm. Not animated at all? I don't think so. That isn't Unless I've missed the truth the last four years. Mm. I sometimes see a bit of, <laughs> of behaviour that's in my Yeah. I like him making that awful noise earlier. No, well, I was egging her on on that Yeah, one, you were. Sorry. Winds her up for uh, that time. What about There's No Disgrace Like Home? Is this a series? If it's series one, I'm gonna, I don't really know series one. Oh, more, dear. Yeah. In my defence, they didn't air those a lot on BBC Two when we were growing up. So it was so in the UK when they first bought The Simpsons. I would say it was probably ninety six. You started. are correct. Oh, get it. And it first aired on BBC One. BBC Two. Is it BBC Two? So yeah, in my six head, o'clock in the evening. No, I think it aired before that. I nope. It aired BBC One about half past five, six o'clock on a Saturday night, and then no, nope. really. Yeah, it definitely had on BBC Two. Yeah, first. definitely, it was on BBC Two. Right, we're gonna have to. I know this. That. I know this because I checked. Oh, so where have I got a BBC One? The reason from? I checked was you're you're giving information that's important anyway because the it my relationship with The Simpsons is all based. It, it started in 1990, but actually, again, it's one of those things that I didn't come to until 1996. And when it, it aired in this country. When it aired in this country, yeah. Was it ever on Sky? I was just going to rephrase that. Like, satellite yeah, stuff. I'm sure it was on Sky 1. Yeah. And then it's because I'm assuming that they only aired them that late on because I'm assuming it became they became cheaper. I think it was to do with uh, Sky just wanted to keep or... hold of them as an exclusive mm. thing because they were... There was a lot of cachet built up around them in the early 90s. Yes. And even if you weren't watching them, which I wasn't until 1996, you still knew who Bart was. Yes. And you oh, probably knew who Homer was. Sorry? They were over it, weren't they? Yeah. They, like, people were bringing lunchboxes to school. So. And that was part of the mystique for me was when it started on BBC Two. Yeah, I was, I was kind so of getting excited. Into this. There was a huge Ferrari, as far as I remember. Yeah, there was. Certainly in the playground, yeah. about the symptoms yeah, that were coming, well. uh, coming to normal tally. Yeah. Terrestrial. Yeah. Uh, is what we didn't call it that. It was just tally, tally. Yeah. But so we we actually 1996 was a bit of a watershed for me anyway because I moved for the first time in my life right in 1996 in July 1996. So it was a big upheaval there. 
it also opened up a lot of new experiences for me. One of them was CD. Oh, it only sounds CD if you want it to. <laughs> Name the experience Jeez. you have. I'm going I was literally going to do that. Yeah, the Simpsons. <laughs> so one of the things that we were able to do. So Grimsby, where I moved to, for anyone that doesn't know, is as close to being a coastal town as you can get without actually being one. And neighbours a place called Cleethorpes. In Cleethorpes, there was a place called Fantasy World. Fantasy World is like a was no longer there, unfortunately. It was like a huge, absolutely huge play area for kids. It was sort of over. It was all in all in the upper space of a, an arcade. Right. A big arcade underneath. It's and like a soft play. So a big, big soft play. Yeah, do you know? Do you, have you well, ever been? I'm, you know, having a four-year-old daughter, I'm pretty. No, I don't mean soft play. Plays. I don't mean have you been to soft play. I mean have you been to fantasy world? No, been to Cleethorpes. So have you been to Panda's Palace in Skegness? I think it burnt so. down. Burnt down. Yeah. Oh, when we were younger. What did so Panda do? Did he cigarettes out? They sent him. They sent him back to China. Yeah. <laughs> and he burnt it down in retaliation. <laughs> yeah. In a fit of rage. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, so fa- but Fantasy World massive honestly it was massive you think of a soft play now and triple the size of it it had this huge slide that was just like a oh, zero vertical. degree drop oh. yeah, vertical slide <laughs> they terrify me yeah, they were brilliant and I only went on it probably very late on because they terrify me yeah. too had a space ball do you, do you ever go on a space ball it's not like the Rick Moranis film no oh space balls oh god I'm a bit slow this evening yeah um, come on no it's nothing like that it's one of those things that that has a seat in the middle, suspended in the middle of three, two or three rings that then spin inside one another, and you go upside down, oh, and you go sideways, yeah. and all that. So it had one of those, which was absolutely amazing That's as well. Pretty cool. Yeah. It also had the Simpsons arcade game. There we go. I was wondering yeah. if they're so, back rounds. Having lived in Lincoln, we didn't really even have a soft play that I knew of. We certainly didn't go, weren't going to soft play. Then moving to Grimsby. You, we had the seaside on our doorstep, and we had this amazing like adventure place called Fantasy World. The world was your oyster. Yeah, it felt like that as a as a. I can see what experiences that open up now then. And the Simpsons arcade game was in there as well, and I had never really, I'd never seen that arcade game for a start. I was already very into arcades and and playing games in them, but the Simpsons arcade game was new to me, and it was twenty p, which was cheap as chips. Right? <laughs> So I was on that as much as I was in the ball pools and as much as I was in the space ball, I was playing Simpsons Arcade. It's Brand a, new to me in 1996. A scrolling fighter, isn't it? So it's a beat-em-up. Yeah. So do, do you know anything more about you've played the game? So I run playing it on an arcade machine in another seaside resort, not Cleethorpes. But I only played it once. I was probably about nine or ten. Um, was never really allowed to play on those sort of things. Or really? Bit, or no, it spoils your money. Or no, you'll never get anything back from it. Oh, it's just a bit of fun in it, Dad. No, 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 you, you can't go on that. Okay, Dad. So, I remember having that thing last time it once. That is That's, a sad story. <laughs> it's a sad story, isn't yeah. it? And more recently, I played it to a friend's house, I think of last year or so. All right, okay. Was that on the Xbox? Uh, can't remember. It was, it, was rele- it was re-released on the Xbox a few years ago. I remember it being really fun. It was, it was great. It was a good little game. Yeah. So, how far did you get? Oh, you know, me. Not me, very far. Not very far. <laughs> okay. No. Imagine Streets of Rage, yeah, Golden Axe, but a Simpsons version. Are you just trying to clarify for everybody? Listening? That's what it is, isn't it? It is. It is that. It's even more appropriate to say, imagine Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Turtles in Time, or the early 90s X-Men game, because they were all just reskins of one another. Really? Yes. Wow. Yeah. They were all they all worked with a joystick and two buttons. Right. And your two buttons would would be a jump and a smack. Yeah. They all do that. Turtles in time, the X Men game, Simpsons Arcade. Several of us. So literally the same game to the different yeah. character sprites. Yeah. That's Konami ridiculous. Konami were just they were sho- shoveling them out. Well, apparently so. Literally just franchise uh, just licensing as much as they they could. Because they were big money on it. And you said about how your dad would say you weren't allowed to play it because it was just a bit of a waste of money. And he slapped me on the wrist as well. He gave you a big old slap on the wrist? Big old slap. Oh dear, that's not very nice. <laughs> he uh, he was right though, because the the games have like these little moments that are designed to suck your money. The, the Americans have an, have an actual term for it. I can't remember what that it right. is, but I will double check it in the break. See, I remember reading Quarter sucker, recently like that. an article about try, it's time to make computer games more accessible in 2019. We spoke about Mario Odyssey. For Do you example. mean in terms of history? 
No, in terms of just making them more fun to play because yeah. video okay. games are mired. I just said video games because we said that mired. Computer games are mired in the tropes that they were established with, if that makes sense. So yeah. they used lots of the features that were, were there then were in, in 1990, mm. and so on. So the art of reading was using the trope of boss battles as an example, mm. but historically, I didn't know this, boss battles were a thing that were in arcade games because it was a way, it was a, a barrier, yeah. a way to stop you in a justifiable way to make you think, oh, that was really annoying, I'm going to put my money into price again. Yeah. Which then obviously seeps into your console games, your Bowser, your Robotnik, your Eggman, and so on. And we still have boss battles. Yeah. And mm. I have never played a game where I've gone, oh, goody, a boss battle. I love boss battles. No. Whereas I have played a game mm. very frequently where, oh, great, another boss battle. This is really frustrating. I've said previously how I'm playing through Hollow Knight at the moment, and there are a lot of boss battles in that, and they are just very frustrating. Really? Um, you don't you don't enjoy those? No. So not there's at been a big all. old movement really built built around things like um Dark Souls, Dragons uh, yeah. Dark Souls and um Demon Souls, that sort of thing. Sort of started around was it two thousand nine, two thousand ten? Things I remember yeah. one of the people we worked with was very enthusiastic about the first one that came out. They just feel, to an outside looking in, they just seem very difficult for the sake of being difficult. But they are built around that idea of boss battles, aren't they, really? Like these ultra, not yeah, like big old challenges. Lots of lots of challenges. Yeah. That you have to master. Right. I don't know. I've never played any of them. Yeah. I, I've played Bl- Bloodborne. I've got Bloodborne. Right. I actually got quite into it. Did I didn't you get, get very far through you get it. Buzz from it, or was it just yeah? And that's for... that's something that I was quite enjoying Hollow Knight when I played it. Right, with the bosses, they are challenging, but they're not things that you can't overcome. Presumably, you have. In fact, I know that you have overcome a lot of the bosses in. Yeah, but Hollow Knight. The, the way the the, the game structured is, I might start doing one thing. Oh, solve this for game, so I'll just come back to it later. Yeah, I have gone through quite a few of them, but some of them have been a right pain in the. Some of them are, yeah. Area. It's, and I, just, I don't find that fun. I, I want to play is it the Mantis Sisters or something like that? Oh, Have yeah, that was, sisters? that was a pain, yeah. Are they, I don't know if they're called the yeah, Mantis Sisters. Yeah, the, the Mantis Kings or Mantis Queens or something. Mm. Mantis Three Monarchs, of them yeah. with Lantis. So you do one and you, you learn how to play it and then you do that one and then you get two doing the exact same fight yep. pass at the same time. Yeah, I just, I just don't find There are fun. lots of difficult challenges in that game. Yes. And it is a symptom, for lack of a better word, of what has been going on around Demon Souls, Dark Souls, the Souls right. games, Soulsborne games, I think they call them now. Yeah, Metroidvania, Soulsborne. Yeah, the idea that a challenge is, that is okay. they, call it, they call them Soulsborne. I think they call them Soulsborne. Oh, I really hope that's not true. You're smoking, aren't sure. So I'm, I'm pretty sure it is. Right, okay. Is that like how they call the platforms? They call them Mario Sonics. Yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a derivative the- way games. to come up with your genre names, is it? Metroidvania. Mm. They should call platformers Mario Sonics. Should we call them though, going forward? <laughs> Mario Sonics. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. And every racing game will call it a Crash Kart. Crash Kart? Crash Bandicoot, Mario Kart. Even Gran Turismo. Oh, it's just another Crash Kart game. So my point is... You are... Your boss, your boss battles, battles are never... Are a holdover yeah. from that. You know, yes, there are this whole genre of games you're talking about that are kind of separate to that. They've but reinvented that. Boss element. battles are a thing to impede your progress they delivery are. to sap your money. They are. And that that's not enjoyable. That's the end of my point. No, it's not enjoyable if your money is going to disappear into the machine. Yeah. And this game is is definitely that. There are bosses, there are eight levels, there are bosses at the end of each level and some of them are cheap. Like, they are seriously there just to take your money Just away. do things to trip you up deliberately. Yeah, there, and... there's things that if you are, you just can't avoid being hit and right. therefore dying. Right, yeah, so, that sounds yeah. nasty. There's certainly the last bat, the the last boss, uh, who is Monty Burns, in Obviously. three different forms, classic. <laughs> uh, what are the three forms of Mr. Burns? He, well, he's a robot, for a start. He's in, he's in a robot. Right. The robot, I think, it starts off with legs, so I might be bodging this, but he starts off with legs, possibly, and then he loses legs, and he sprouts an egg track. Obviously. So, you know, like a, ro- a tank track. Yeah. Like Wally. Yeah. <laughs> he looks exactly like Wally. With Mr. Burns' head. Yeah. And then he loses the A-track the A track, and starts to bounce around or something like that. All the while, he's dropping nuclear bombs out of the front of his uh, front Obviously. Hat. Why would you not? Yeah, it's ridiculous. I did... We will get to that as well. We, You'll get to see that. Because I played through the game recently and got, and some, got saves. some save states. Love this stuff. And finished the game for the first time ever. How'd that feel? 
pretty cool. Yeah? Yeah, in the sense that I have never seen certain levels of the game. I only had a certain amount of money when so I was how, in the arcade. So how does it link to The Simpsons then, in terms of the characters, the levels, yes, what so Simpsons well, you know, is? you know, because you played it, that it's well, four first, different characters. Level. Oh, you only played first There was some level. goons walking past, I was being Marge. And there, it felt lots weird, of different characters. people as Marge. It, it, yeah, it's a bit... It, she, she wields a hoover. <laughs> it's feminism in action right oh, now, yes. isn't it? Yeah. So you can play as one of four characters. M- the baby, Maggie, has been stolen away because she's accidentally ended up sucking a diamond that for some reason <laughs> Smithers and Burns were stealing from a jewellery store. Which I don't follow the story. Sense. Do not follow the story. Bumbles in the air would do that. Yeah, well, yeah. Maybe that's why she, even think of that. Maybe that's why she shot him in, possibly. in the show. Yeah, possibly. Um, so you, you play through, and there are lots of suited blokes who yeah, trying to impede Jenny. Some uh, rotund-looking bald guys that impede Jenny. Just, yeah, so there, there are quite a few different enemies, actually. There are the... I've actually got the list of the enemies. Ooh, the, go on. The men in the suits are called goons. The rotund Obviously. guys are called fat goons. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wow. There's one called door women, which I can't think what they are. I guess off the top of my a head. A bouncer, but a, just a woman? Possibly. I'm not sure. that There are firefighters, for some reason. There are crusty lookalikes, which are pretty cool because they bounce on balls. They bounce on balls and you have to knock them off the balls to, and then they get disrobed by you mm. doing that. I mean, of their, of their clown. Oh, right. Costume. As an image of, uh, no, not like that. And... Then there are rabbits. And that was a bit odd to me. Were they like anthropomorphic rabbits? Yes. So Matt Groening, before he did The Simpsons, yeah, not in your head, yeah, he did a, a cartoon series called from no, what was it called? Life in Hell. Life in. I was gonna say From Hell. That's a film. That's nothing. Yeah, to do From with. Hell is that. From yeah, Death it is from Death 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 yeah. yeah, Life in Hell. Uh, I'm guessing it's some reference to that. Yes, it is. right. It is exactly that. There you go. So um, yeah, it's from some Matt Groening's earlier stuff. That's built around uh, Krusty Land, so they they are integrated right. into that, and they like a walking, you know, like Disneyland. Yeah, the sort of mascots. Uh, then after that, they you in the cemetery and there are zombies the zombies okay. are pretty cool actually they right. they look this is the thing because i said about it seems like it's designed around simpsons post series one when they right. really locked down yeah the style the visual style even the zombies in this look like they you might expect from the animators uh of the simpsons okay like post season one but they were only working with season one i i'm i'll be interested to see what you think hmm. about that the zombies as well, they do, uh, when they rise from the ground, they move very, very similarly to the zombies out of Thriller. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, there are moves, you know, like the, the, the essential moves of Thriller when yeah. they're doing the yeah. on-the-spot dancing. Yeah. They move like that. They're, they're that must be like intentional. That. Oh, it's definitely intentional. They, the, the 90s was The Simpsons and Mike, Michael Jackson, wasn't it? So. Well, Star Raven Dash was the episode that had Michael Jackson in. Uh, was that first series? think it was series two. Series two. Hmm. But the link was clearly there before even uh, Michael Jackson was in the series. Hmm. Yeah, zombies. Then after that, barrel women. Right. Random Bigfoot. I remember the Bigfoots, actually. Loggers. Donuts. Because this is what I didn't realise. I never got this in the arcade itself. But you end up in some dream. You get knocked out. I think this is the second to last level. You get knocked out. And then you end up inside your own head. And inside your own head, there are walking, talking donuts who attack you. There are clouds shaped like Marge's head that whip their hair at you. There are power plant employees. You know in the credits where... It, yeah, in the opening sequence, where Homer is wearing his... Is and he's got the little suit piece the, of... The uh, rod. Yeah. Yeah. There's those. Right. But when you knock the heads off, there's nobody in the suit. Ooh, that's yeah, it's pretty cool. This is probably the best level. Uh, and there are saxophones. There are flying saxophones at the end of the level. So does the level change depending on which character you are, though? No, unfortunately not. I, I did I did wonder about that. So I played through as two different characters, and it doesn't change. The first time I played through as Marge, and I saw these Marge heads popping up. So I wondered, if, is it yeah. going to change if I'm Homer? And, and, and unfortunately not. Uh, uh, there are, oh, bark devils as well. Little flying right. bark devils. You know, like they pop up on his... Yes. Yeah. Um, old shoulder. And trick. lastly, ninjas. Because you go to Why a TV not? set, and so the ninjas are Early on 90s, TV set. Everyone was into ninjas, weren't they? Indeed. Yes, they were, yeah. Uh, so, that, so much nowadays. Ninja. That, though, is quite. Ninja Warrior? What the, yeah, they're actually ninjas The people are, are, the, are the ninjas now, aren't they? Well, that was very. Uh, yeah. We are the ninjas fans. now. Oh. Uh, it's quite a big list of 
There's a lot of enemies there. They're varied enemies. I just can't believe that this is literally the same game as Turtles, whatever, yeah. just with different... So I just find that really bizarre. Yeah? Why? I just do, that, that they could get away with Yeah, that. that's the thing. If you think about the way that people react to asset flipping now with... Do you know what asset flipping nope. is? You give me... You, look, you look to me yeah. like I should do. So... There's a big issue on places like Steam. Communi- Steam the Steam community, the, the PC gaming community, really have taken against this type of game called an asset flip. And an asset flip is where they take a pre-built engine. Oh, an like, asset. I thought you said, I thought you were saying uh, acid. No, it's one of those a- again. Asset flip is one of those again, yeah. Acid flip, like something like, you might call a, a 60s hippie or something. No. An acid flipper. Yes, indeed. <laughs> An asset flip is where they, they buy pre-made assets from an asset store that is attached to a pre-existing engine like Unreal. Then they make a shonky game and put it out for a small amount of money that will, and it reels people in very, very quickly with it before they realise that the game is not very good. Right. Poorly made. And there's a whole thing around this. That yeah, do understandably, this. because it's a bit, it's a bit dubious. It's a bit of a dubious mm. business practice, isn't it, to do that? But then you also get people that go off the deep end and start to call games that aren't re- that use pre-bought assets, not in an asset flippy way, but they then get looked down upon these games that have done that because, and they get review bombed and all sorts because right. they've used assets that they haven't made from scratch themselves, which is absolutely ridiculous. But we don't need to go too far down that. So the thing you, is, if you bought some Sonic assets, you can make a Sonic Four game. <laughs> Uh, if what, you're so inclined. What, what What's Sonic for? Sonic for? What's Sonic for? We've talked about it previously, haven't we? We, we did, off my... Oh. Because you didn't want to talk about it. Well, I brought it up again now. Yeah, why? A trademark. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> um, the point is, if we had that same attitude in the 1990s, we wouldn't have the, arcade, the Simpsons arcade game. Or, or a great many, actually, well-loved arcade games. Oh, yeah, they, they were good games. Or, yeah. Well, I, they, I'll rephrase that. They were games that they were well liked. are well-regarded. Yeah. They're not well... I don't know if they are well-regarded. They're just well-liked. I don't know what people think of them. Maybe it's that nostalgia element that people played them and enjoyed them at the time, maybe. I, I, yeah. I don't know. So I, I've never played them, so I, I can't possibly say. No. I just find that egregious that... They, that can only got away with that. It's not a It's not again. It's not about getting away with it because it was a totally different business. But they did it. They that they did it. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing I find egregious. But if you can, then why not? Business wise, like you were t- in the last episode, you were totally in like capitalist mindset. Yeah, well, now it's tinkering with something I like. That's, that's oh right, right, okay. The fish. Not. Mm, I don't know. It's not you at the helm. Doing all the capitalist well, piggery. Yeah, to be fair, if I was in charge of uh, that You'd company... You'd probably do it. Yeah, why not? It's not like they weren't putting the effort in either, was it? In the sense that they made things that, that did justice to the franchises hmm. that they were licensing. They looked nice and they played reasonably well in an arcade setting. Christopher. Hello. Did you know that the Bigfoot enemy... You don't know, but did you know? The Bigfoot enemy is based on Homer when he was mistaken for Bigfoot in the episode The Call of the Simpsons, which is the episode you were trying to uh, put your finger on earlier yeah. when I said about the Bigfoot. That was one of the RV, wasn't it? They met the RV salesman. Yes. Bob. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know better than I do. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. there we go. The game does cut quite deep, if you like, right. in terms of its references to the, the Simpsons. First twenty. It's episodes. only though got yeah exactly. It's mm. only got the first twenty four episodes. To base its They're callbacks, like six hundred fifty episodes, though, aren't they? Uh, I know, yeah, exactly. If they'd made this there. now, well, to be honest, if they'd made this now, it would probably not be that well thought of because The Simpsons is, has gone off a bit of a cliff, hasn't it? That's what meant to phrase it, yeah. Yeah, there are plenty of little references, and it'll be interesting as someone that does know it, mm-hmm. the the series a lot better than I do. It'll be interesting to see if you pick up on them. So it's probably about time we. Have a little look, isn't it? And I've yeah, put you through your uh, paces yes. on beat ups for the first time. Uh, yep. Excellent. Okay. Are we going to play against each other then? Unfortunately, not. No. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, Chris, you have 
now played The Simpsons Arcade for, well, the second time in your life. What is your possibly, view? Possibly third time in my life. Possibly but third. Definitely not the first time. Your dad was nice enough to let you have a couple of goes. No, I had one. I think I had one go in the arcade and then one go around a friend's house last year or year before. Oh, yeah. I forgot that you said that you'd played it at your friend's house that time. Uh, but so third time in your life. Maybe second, because in my head, I might not have actually played that time at the arcade. It's just maybe I you might have just it. dreamed Possibly. of it or, or lusted after it yeah. across the, what did they call the spaces in arcade? I was going to say alley. Arcade hall? Yeah, arcade whatever atrium. it is. I don't know. You've played it though. I have. You finished it. I did. In a sitting. Look at that. Largely because we had a, an unlimited <laughs> number of credits. <laughs> Completely big. Yeah, credit. lots of 20p's. Yeah. Huge stack of them. Well, how did you? How do you feel about it? What did you think? I really enjoyed it. The first thing that popped out was the the game popping out at me. How high quality the visuals were. It looked stunning. Yeah, it, yeah, I totally agree. And that's the thing that was pulling you in, yeah. pulling me in in nineteen ninety six as an eight year old how, from afar. How, yeah, it looked. Screen. Yeah, we, we talked about the uh, track screen off uh, off microphone. How it introduced Pops. the characters in a really nice way and. Mm. It was pretty much an animated version of the animated <laughs> intro screen uh, title sequence from the yeah. TV series, mm. wasn't it? Yeah. And, and Albeit run, rendered in paint. Yeah, there is an it element. It looked very It does simple. look a bit painty, but that's just the nature of very the technology they were working with. Well, it? and, and given paint. the limitations, the fact that they got so close to what was on hmm. the TV yeah. is testament to, to how well they did, actually. How well they reskinned that game. How well they re... Yeah, it is a reskin, <laughs> yeah. But it works. Yeah. And it was. It was engaging in that way. You said that you like it. The thing that I would say about the game is that actually it's not that good a game if you take it as a game. Yeah. In that it, it the controls are so simple. You can just go through that game with the joystick and one button. Which is what I did. And just keep hammering away. And add a right old blast yeah so so you're not getting the fun necessarily from the from the gameplay the gameplay is not foremost in your mind when you're enjoying that game it did get quite repetitive just because so to clarify you've got the four direction buttons and you've got an attack button and then there's a jump button and i didn't really jump at all in the game because i didn't need to no oh and also the um there was the reload in the the money as well but that's not really a button is it uh so that's well, it's only... quite important because you wouldn't have finished the game if you hadn't no. been able to reload the bu- the money no should we maybe address that now then the, what the the money side of it how it was a money sponge yes it was because it, it was a heinous money sponge yeah it? and that's precisely why konami put it out there into the world isn't it really because it that's what the arcade games were for really <sighs> just to sap money out of yeah. saps yeah, they just sucked money out of your pocket. Yeah. We tried to total up how much money I would have spent in real time uh, with the 20p's playing that game just then. It would have been a lot of money. Well, it depends It depends who we're talking about, but... Several pounds. We're talking, yeah, at least a fiver. At least five quid, if not more. Five English pounds sterling. Yeah. To get through an eight-level game. The game wasn't too long either, was it? No, I did I've... about half an hour. I th- yeah, it might have been a little bit longer than that, mm. but it wasn't. It wasn't an hour. No, I I certainly don't think it was an hour. Which again, in terms of like the context of how you would have you would have played it in nineteen ninety six yeah. or nineteen ninety one, well, if you yeah. were lucky enough to see it then, you maybe wouldn't have had more than an hour in an arcade. No, no. if you're down there, and it wouldn't have one twenty p. Well, you certainly wouldn't no. have done because <laughs> your, dad, your dad would have withheld. Yep, it was it was probably monopolising a decent amount of your arcade time, but not not so much that you would feel like you maybe wouldn't go back and play. Because there was always this feeling that you maybe could get to the end, given enough money. But I don't think it would have been very easy to go to the end. Or at least no, if you no. did, it would have spent, you spent a lot of money I, on it. I can tell you categorically that it was <laughs> not easy to get to the end. No. It was difficult, but it wasn't difficult in a satisfying way, unfortunately. No. The the mid, the difficulty came largely from the fact that you were you were going to get hit. Yes. And you only had a limited amount of money. That was the problem. That was what you were trying to navigate, trying to limit the number of hits that you take, but not being able to, knowing inevitably you were going to die. Exactly. And I think you said this in the first part as well, that the, the boss battles in there hit you and there was no way to preempt their attacks or even in some cases avoid the attacks. Yeah. So the but the bear, so one of the one of the bosses is a bear. 
in the middle of the woods after you've killed a load of Bigfoots. Which was quite odd. Playing yeah, as Marge was. getting savaged by a bear. Yeah, I mean, it's not the weirdest thing that happens in the game, but there was the bear. <laughs> it had a, quite a noticeable, obvious attack pattern. Did a roll, yeah. did a swipe, did a bit of a lunge weird thing. The roll was easy to avoid. Yes, it was, because it telegraphed it was going to do it. It did a yeah. bit of a crouch. and But then the swipe... Came out of nowhere. Yeah, it came out of nowhere, and it seemed like if you held off from attacking the bear... It waited for you. Yes. And that was queued up, ready for you to get into proximity. There was no way to attack it and finish the level without being hit. No, because the hit was had such a, a radius that it would be, if you were trying to attack the bear, mm. you would be within that radius, yeah. which just felt unfair. You were never going to get away. You were never going to finish the level without getting hit. No, not at, at all. all. That's what we're talking about when it's when we, when we say it's a, a bit of a money sink. Yeah. Yeah. It, and the bosses were quite odd as well, weren't they? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so oddest boss that you came up against? Uh, um, Moe's Tavern, which in itself was quite a strange level with really nice red velvet carpets. Some uh, they really took a few liberties with Moe's Tavern, didn't yeah, they? Given so they what we told. see a bit in the shop in the show. Yeah, just go go for it. There, there was roulette tables. There were, yeah, there were there were, there were two bars on some billiard tables. Some yeah, bars. two two women throwing barrels at you. Yeah, happens in Moe's all the time. Yeah. It was a very strange... He had two arcade cabinets. One being the Simpsons game that you were playing on, which is very messy. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Obviously, you weren't in the game. And then the other one being an Aliens Yeah, game. where Marge was the Xenomorph. Marge was the Alien. It's very odd. Didn't they got yeah. away with that? Oh, license? yeah, definitely. I don't know. Homage, probably yeah, covered by... Within the, the parameters of parody, possibly. Yeah. And then the level culminated with this drunk... And that was the weirdest part of the level. There was then attacking Marge and breathing fire at her. Yeah. The drunk seemed to me like some kind of Frankenstein-y version of Moe himself. It was gross, Like the shape of his face was Moe's face, but seen through a carnival mirror. Drunk Moe. Yeah, but worse than drunk Moe. Mm. He was like all gangly and weird. Towered over Marge. Yeah, and... (laughs) He breathed fire. Yeah, because why not? Before that, you'd have the boss that was the bouncing crusty ball balloon thing. That yeah, I think it was strange. an inflatable of some kind, you know, like they have in the parades in New York. Like a kind of a float. Yeah, that right. sort of thing. I think that's what it was supposed to be. Oh, okay, I didn't get that. But... There was a sphere. Yeah, it was with very spherical. Arms that, <laughs> yeah. that grabbed you and tried to swat at you. Yeah, no idea what was going on there. No, no idea. The bear, actually, is probably one of the most grounded yeah. of all of the bosses. Which says a lot, doesn't it? I think so, yeah. The best level, then. What There are eight levels. Which level do you think that you enjoyed the most? I did really like the first level. The first level was set in Springfield itself, in, in the one of the streets, and there were characters in the background that I felt made it look like Springfield. Yeah. A bit right at the end where some characters appeared on screen and... He was a bit further on, and then you could see Skinner and Martin in the background having a chat. Yeah. And then some goons came on, and Skinner and Martin wrapped it and ran, ran off the screen. I yeah. thought that was a really nice yeah. touch. So I did that that level. But... There are a few little bits like like that through other levels as well. Like there was uh, Otto in the yeah. background of the start of the Crustyland le- level, and Dr. at Monroe. the end of the Woods level, Sideshow Bob turns up with a turn. Yeah. And... To eat. Which we discussed about the timeline of yeah because the very last episode of series one was the episode where Sideshow Bob was tries to do a murder ex- tries to do a murder so this would have maybe come out after that episode had aired presumably this was in development while the series was airing so yeah. they probably hadn't come to that should we just go with that I, I think that's probably that's it, a safe yeah. assumption yeah I to be honest it wasn't trying to stick within any particular no. time was it so no yeah you know, they probably weren't worrying about Sideshow Bob being a goodie. When he actually was a baddie at the time. Exactly. Yeah. But so it was nice to see those cameos. And the one that you mentioned, the Skinner Martin one, that was a particularly good one because of the way they reacted. And I guess it felt true to the show that did. Because yeah. Because that... they might have been mates. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, a little chat in the streets yeah, and whatever. Certainly. But then, equally, at the end of that, ju- just directly after that, you have to fight a fireman. Yeah. Which is odd. But again, in the in the scope of the game, it, you kind of accept it, don't you? Maybe here in my job history. <laughs> Perhaps a beef. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So the weirdest level, or the best level possibly, maybe best and weirdest, was the dream level. Yeah, which I'd mentioned before we played. It was a fun. Yes, you did. Yeah, so, yeah, explain that a lot better, do you mind? The previous episode had culminated with Marge falling down a waterfall. Yeah, going over the edge of a waterfall. Uh, With Smithers 
cackling maniacally because of how he was still escaping Maggie, blah, yeah. blah, blah. So she fell down the waterfall and washed up uh, at the edge of the river or whatever it washed up into. She's been knocked unconscious by the fall, which makes perfect sense. So it then goes into a dream level. So I liked how it fitted with the plot. Yeah, they that's made a bit of effort. The game. Yeah, exactly. And this was a series of vignettes of all different bits of these dreamlike characters. The yeah. first bit were some donuts that were firing small donuts like you know, like in Gremlins too, really, with the the small tomatoes. Yeah, and the tomatoes. Yeah. yeah. Then it went into. But at least this was a. Oh, I suppose Gremlins isn't that realistic. I was no. going to say. But at least this isn't a dream sequence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Therefore, Gremlins. there's a reason. <laughs> Completely grounded in realism. And then you have these flying saxophones. They're the flying Bart characters. Yeah, they They're were quite... The quite large cheap. things made out of cloud. Yeah. And the boss of this level was a, a bowling ball, which you felt was a bit odd. Yeah. I said I thought that was quite suited for the first series because that was the episode in the first series where... Homer buys Marge the bowling ball where he's made it fit his fingers. Yeah, I remember that episode. She sort of... Marge... Uh, Marge tries to use almost it to, has a, to get back at him. Yeah. And then almost has a, a dalliance. An affair. Yeah. Mm. With the with her instructor. The swarthy Jacques. But... French. That fits for us because we were Marge. Yes. Bart. Replace Marge with Bart in that level. Yeah. All sorts of... Sort of falls down. Becomes troubling, doesn't it? Yeah. He's trying to get a bowling ball to get back yeah. his dad. But then I suppose maybe maybe there are elements that fit everybody. So if you're in yep. that dream sequence, your boss, your psychological nemesis is different for each person. You've got the saxophones for... Yeah. And then you've got the Bart, Bart devils for Bart. You've got... I suppose the bowling ball kind of fits Homer as well. Probably fits Homer the best. So what would, ha- what would Marge's be if the bowling ball fits Homer the best? Well, I felt it, it was quite good for Marge because it's her, yeah, no, I her, totally get her nightmare. Or yeah, almost. exactly. I think that fits Marge really well. Yeah. In but it the context of what you explained. No, but the saxophones would fit but, uh, Lisa because she's worrying about being great on the saxophone, mm. being perfect, and the notes are raining down on her. The devil Bart's would fit Bart because he is sort of... Well, I, I was going to say he's worrying about being bad, but he doesn't he really is. do no. that, does he? Uh, so maybe it doesn't fit the way I'm but those proposing. Aspects from the level, but then the level culminates with the bowling ball boss, which doesn't really fit these no, three parts, does it? No, I don't know. Incoherent, but then dreams are, I suppose, if we're going to well, yes. give, them, I, I, give them the benefit of the doubt again. I was going to say we're probably overthinking it, but let's, we go, probably let's, are let's go with that, it, yeah. shall we? That it's, yeah. it's a dream sequence. You can do what you want. Yeah. Okay. And then she woke up and it was all a dream. And yeah, she, then, then she woke up, it was level. all a dream, and the next level was Channel 6. Yeah. So TV studio. It was at this point, I think, that With you said, ninjas. why are all these people attacking Marge? It was, yeah. <laughs> and it's a good question. Like, I don't think... So Burns, Monty Burns, is the big body... Uh, big body? Big <laughs> boss. Yes. Of, at the, end of, of the game. The, game. Uh, the assumption is, I suppose, as you said, that he has paid all of these people off. I would assume so. But... But the, why have all the cha- why is the whole of Channel Six gone with that? Why have they gone? Maybe it's yeah, all right. We'll be lucky. We'll be. And the whole plot of the game is that he's trying to get this diamond that's in yeah. his mouth. Surely why the, he need the cost of paying all his people to attack Marge yeah. probably more than the diamond. Po- yeah, quite probably. Yeah. And has he paid a bear? Is the bear on his books? Well, that is probably an unfortunate coincidence. And Bigfoot. The Bigfoot. Paying Bigfoots. Yeah, how many Bigfoots? How many endangered species did we offer in this game? There were four Bigfoots that I got. Just four? I think there were four. It felt like there was Bigfoots coming out of your wazoo at one point. Out of your wazoo? Yeah. Out of your rupiettes? Yeah, exactly. Mm. (laughs) Yeah, so the bosses were cheap in the sense that they were where the money was going, wasn't it? Yes, wasn't it? The the 20p's were really raining down. (laughs) They were. Uh, They were making it rain. Yeah, and, and actually it reached its fever pitch. Quite obviously, with with Mr. Burns, the last boss would have been easier, I think, with more than one person playing it. Yeah, but the last boss was structured so that it was always facing myself as player one. So there were there was no way at all to dodge the attacks, no. which was incredibly unfair. And they were coming thick and fast. They were. They? I, I didn't. I should have kept count of how many times you died during that. But I I would say comfortably fifteen times. Yeah. Okay. So if you get two so lives per twenty p, yeah, yeah, it's not fifteen pounds, is it? No, is it fifteen, 15 lives, three pounds, whatever. <laughs> it's some money. 
It's worth quite a lot of money, yeah. given that you are probably an eight-year-old kid trying to get through the last in boss the arcade, of the game. trying to get through the last boss of the game. Already put a load of money in there. Yeah. I don't know how anyone was getting to the end of these games, really. No, no, lot certainly not in their first big game. Big old stack between these. Yeah. Have, have you been to the arcades lately? They're mostly two P machines now, aren't they? There are a lot of two P machines. Yeah. Uh, what they've taken to doing, and I, I think they've been this this concept's been around other places for a lot longer than we've had it. But they, ticket thing. Yeah, yeah, so there's the tickets, and you have a ticket booth where there's lots of prizes, and there's always something Completely ridiculous. unattainable. Yeah, like an Xbox for a million tickets. Yeah. And then you go on your, you go on a machine, and it's maybe spitting out ten tickets yeah. for a pound. <laughs> the the like most that. my daughter has won on the, the, the penny slots when we go to those sort of uh, arcades, you know, she, she goes up with this huge ream of tickets all, all stuck together and whatever, Oh, there you go. You can have a couple, a lolly. Of, a couple of yeah, exactly. Yeah. A couple of sweets. Yeah, maybe maybe a Paw Patrol rubber. Well, that sounds quite good actually. It's high quality. Yeah, but then you compare that to your vacuum cleaners, your Xboxes, and whatever that are there too. Vacuum cleaners. Yeah. <laughs> Never handheld, seen one of those. Little handheld ones. Oh right. Okay. Can you and now I've not seen that at all. Well, you are going to the right one. Now I should get, I should go to this better one, shouldn't the I? The best one that I played though uh, was in London over the summer. Was a I've got a real soft spot for air hockey. Yeah. Don't worry about air hockey. Is that the really like Pac-Man it. air hockey? Yeah. Where it drops loads and yes. loads of pucks. Did not know that was going to happen. No. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah. There's one in uh, the arcade at Skegness. Is On there? the pier. Right. Yeah. That's very exciting to know. So, the loosing around Pac-Man. So oh, I'll tell you what else is in uh, Skegness Pier. A VR machine. Yes. Virtual that, router machine. That was in the arcade in London as well. Was it? It cost Girl. £8 yeah. to go. It's yeah. 15 minutes. That's ridiculous. There was another one that had uh, a bit like Mission Impossible with your, your lasers. You had to try and dodge them. Yeah, I arcade. saw one of those. I can't remember where I saw that, though. Yeah, but that... I mean, that's quite an interesting thing. Never in the arcades when we were down there. No, they weren't. As kids, anyway. I'm, I'm really getting arcade lust now. I really want to know. <laughs> Problem is, it's just the amount of money you have to spend to... Yeah, money well, money. Where, these days, when we go to the arcade, it's not anything about... When I used to go to the arcade, you would go... And there would be certain machines that you would always end up going to. So you go to one arcade and it might be Soul Calibur, uh, Soul, Soul Blade as it was. Right. Prior to being called Soul Calibur. If you go into Fantasy World, it would be the Simpsons arcade game. One of the questions that I asked you while we were playing, kind of trying to respect your capacity as the, what I called the Simpsons Encyclopedia, but clearly have shown that you're not quite at that uh, level. No, you? not quite um, you, you thought me up as. You did, you did answer this question there, because I said about, they, they fly in as superheroes mm. when they've died. So they fly in, they die, then they come back spawning as superheroes. And I didn't really understand why that was, but you explained. So I suspect it's a reference to Batman, which was when the show first started, Batman was this, um, well, it's like a Batman, like an alter ego of Bart. And I should think it would be some reference to that, but Marge was unoriginally called Super Marge, although I guess Batman, Batman is hardly the most original name, is it? Mm. But I don't really remember Batman ever really being referenced in the TV show. The only, I mean, it, it probably was, but the only time I can really remember it sort of being a relevant thing was the song Do the Bartman. Which was a, like a novelty song with, yeah. that came off the heels of the first series as well. So around like, the just time like this, this game, game kind of did. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, you then had a little look about that before we started recording. Well, I, I got into my head that there was uh, there's, there's someone really famous that was involved with that song. I think it's Vanilla Ice. <laughs> so we, we had to look to see if it was Vanilla Ice. And it wasn't. It was Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson, of all Michael people. Michael yeah. Blinking Jackson. So I, it's it's at once a surprise and and not. I was surprised. Yeah, I, well, I was surprised, yeah. but equally it makes a lot of sense because Michael Jackson was ubiquitous at the time and, and famously very into The Simpsons, mm. wasn't he? He ended up being in an episode. Did you say it was series two? Series, was well, I thought it was series two, but again, quick Google, series three. Start raving series dad. Series three, right, yeah. And that's the one where he plays the very large, uh, yeah. big friendly giant yes. type character. Isn't and he? does the Happy Birthday Lisa <clears> song. <throat> yeah, on the bridge. Yeah. Which is a, a nice episode. It is a lovely episode. Although they have stopped showing it now. Yeah, for reasons Obvious that we reasons. don't need to explain. They stopped showing the one where they go to New York for quite a while. Why did they stop the one? Oh, the Twin Towers. Yeah, yeah, he parks, did, yeah, the car gets clamped under the Twin Towers. Yeah. Uh, that was one of the last, in my opinion, one of the last great Simpsons episodes. One of I think it was Series 11. Yeah. But I've seen it more recently, so that's that's good. I don't think I have, but then I've stopped taking notice of The Simpsons largely. They're just to, No, so I'm just thinking of a bit from the episode. It's making me smirk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, cheap bosses. 
we've, yes. we've covered. We have. We haven't necessarily pinned down why maybe someone will play through that whole game. Because I think it's not, again though, it's not hard, is it? The game be a masochist on your pocket. Yeah, exactly. Took a lot of money. You'd be it. you'd be cruel to your wallet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, to play this game, the worst thing to be cruel to. So why would people do it? And now there's a question I don't know the answer to. The only thing that I could come up with was the constant novelty. Yeah, it was inventive. It, it was changeable as well. Like it was changing things up each each level. Every, even within the levels. Every level. Mm. Yeah, even within like single levels, you so you were getting the, the new Fakun, enemies, for example. Introduced. So the fat goons popped up in the first episode, the first level, and then the second level they reappeared, but this time they were inside uh, teacups from a, a Cups yes, and Saucers yeah, ride. Yeah. So they were... They were also the crusty lookalikes. If you knock yeah. them off there, they were also the fat goons. Of course they were, yeah. yeah. So when these uh, flying saucers, want a better phrase, they came at you and you had to hit them, and then the ceramic cracked a couple yeah. of times, so you had a visual indicator of, of where you were, and then hit it again and then they tumbled out and it was a bit of a, a nice twist. Yeah. On and it was constantly doing that, wasn't it? It, it was. was reinventing its enemies. Yeah. I'll it was reintroducing new enemies. Yes. The the zombies came out of nowhere. Yeah, um, that was a fun that level actually I forgot about the cemetery. The ninjas in channel at channel six. Yeah. Came out of nowhere. That actually culminated with a kabuki theatre. Yeah, I was a bit uh, unsure about that. Yeah, you were. <laughs> A bit, yeah, it felt a little bit racy, didn't racy and yeah, not racy. You know, not <laughs> sorry, not racy. You know what I mean, though. Yeah, a racist. bit possibly a bit racist. Possibly, possibly, or definitely. Well, the thing that gives me pause there, because I normally say yes, it is, <laughs> is that the people that made this were Japanese, and so they were rep- they were the ones representing their own culture. So if you and I made a game starring a character, and they came up against a boss that was wearing a bowler hat and was walking around If we do it to ourselves, is it different? Um, yeah, that's the question I'm asking. I think it has some bearing, doesn't it? You get away with it. If you're doing it if you're doing it to yourself, <laughs> then that's an interesting question. Again, one that we don't have time <laughs> for. <laughs> if you if you put up a racist stereotype of yourselves, or what could be construed as a racist stereotype of yourself. Is that racist? Is that racist? It sounds like if a tree falls in the woods and yeah. there's no one around to hear it. It kind of does, yeah. I mean, it's uh, there's philosophy there for sure. There is some. And we ain't no philosophy podcast, uh, do we? Sure not. Maybe we should be. Should Maybe we send it off to Malcolm Gladwell? That's what he thinks. You can send it off to whoever you like. What I know is that we're not going to get an answer here yeah. and now. <laughs> Gladys ain't going to respond to that, is he? If anybody's got uh, uh, an opinion on that or can explain one way or the other. I'd love to love to know. As long as it's not racist. Yeah, please don't be racist. We prefer, we strongly prefer, and not Very racist so. responses. So there you go. Given given that aspect of the game, uh, the question I need to ask you is: Would you recommend that game to people now? So my understanding of it was that it was re-released on the Xbox Live Arcade, or yeah, yeah, this decade. So so I can't remember. Be interesting looking at yeah. when it came out. Yeah. I'd be curious to know how much it came out for. Oh. Oh, it would have. Very concerned. I don't know how much it was. It would have dropped in price quite quickly. I know that in 2009, that was when they brought brought out Turtles in Time. Okay, and how much was that? You remember? Or no, what? I don't. No. I bought it. The, the problem was that they. I don't know if you remember, but the Xbox Live Arcade. Operated on points. Oh, you had to buy yeah, points, of course like in thousands. Did. Yeah, so that kind of obscure system. Yeah, it really mm. was. It was just get you spend round yeah. numbers. Yeah, and it it has the effect of obscuring what the price actually was. Yes, so I of really don't remember how much it would have been. I didn't buy arcade. I did buy Turtles in Time. I uh, think if you're after a beat 'em up, I think there are better yeah, ones. Yeah, certainly out there. there are. Like I mentioned the Streets of Rage and Golden Axe. They were yeah. brilliant. They it, still are brilliant. I played one of them fairly recently. Really? And I really enjoyed so them. So I was going to say, I haven't touched those yeah. for a long while. They felt... It was Streets of Rage I played, and it felt much fairer than the Simpsons yeah. game we just played did. They still do have that thing where the characters try and get on either side of you. So you Yeah, this it. pincer movement that you yeah. pointed out to me the characters yeah. were doing. So that liberally, the enemies were positioned themselves in front of and yeah. behind you. So you were having to make that choice. and that That's definitely was, a beat-em-up thing. Yeah, the uh, game happens. trying to back foot you again. Streets Rage just felt... The bosses felt fairer. The balance of the game, the difficulty felt fairer. This just felt like it was, it was trying to 
get your money off you at every opportunity. I, I didn't really like that. Mm. In terms of a Simpsons fan, I think it was enjoyable to play. Yeah, I think that's what I would recommend it. Albeit mired but... in series one with Smithers having the blue hair being much more cartoony over the top than it became later on. Maybe to its detriment, who knows. I'm very much an advocate for series four to eight or nine. Yeah. Anything past then, apart from some stuff. you Yeah. So your question, to answer that, I'm not really sure if I would recommend it or not. Or at least I'd recommend it to that small portion of people who are curious to see yeah. that time of Simpsons history. Yeah. So if you, yeah, so there's that aspect of it. You, nobody's recommending this as like a must play game for gameplay sake. I would say on a slight tangent from your question, it's a good Simpsons game. Yeah, I think so. Because they're quite few and far between. Are they? Yeah. Okay. Uh, certainly in this period I think they were fairly few and far between. This was the first one, but they there was a slew of other games that came They were quite after. prolific early 90s, yeah. and then early 2000s as well. Yeah, well... Do you remember Simpsons skateboarding? No. <laughs> I do remember, though... Do you remember Sim- Simpsons wrestling? No. Yep, that was a game as well. Oh, right, okay. I'm thinking of things like Hit and Run Hit and, and Road Run. Rage. They were good. Yeah, they I were. I really enjoyed yeah, both exactly. those games. So when you say this is a good Simpsons game, I'm thinking Hit and Run and Mode Rage, much better. Now, I'm, I got both those games confused. I can't remember which one's which. Was Hit, Hit and Run, Run. Hit was the GTA one. Road Rage was the Crazy Taxi That's one. Right, yeah. yeah. The Hit and Run then, the GTA Open World one, that was brilliant. Yeah. I really enjoyed that game because of how they made Springfield feel, the whole city feel yeah. alive. Mm. Really loved exploration. Mm. Um, it was great. And then the Crazy Taxi one, I played that a, a lot longer yeah. than really a, a daft Crazy Taxi clone. I, I really should have done. No, I think, they were, I think they were both good. And in that context, I think that this isn't necessarily even... It's unfair to, to put the comparison out there because there's such a disparity of time. Well, yeah. And the flip side is, like I said, there was the around the time that the 2000s, like I said, you had skateboarding became big with yeah. your your, your yeah. favourite Tony Hawk's game. Some chap in a suit or yeah. lady in a chump. suit. Some chump in a suit. That's a much better phrase. Decided, right, let's have a bit of that. So yeah. let's do a Simpsons version of that. Yeah, and wrestling. Ditto with, wrestling. With Smackdown. Yeah, exactly. Those they were just yeah. really poor clones. Right. There were probably other ones. Those are the two that jumped to mind because they were just so... At, yeah. At the time, just so... What are, me you, by what are you doing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a bad game. Okay, I w- that's what I would say. It's a bad game. So why'd you bring it to his bad game then? Because because that, we're not talking about bad games. We're talking about <laughs> games that matter to us. All right, I'll let you off them. And just because it's a bad game now doesn't mean it was a bad game then. No, nope. all right. And in the context of a an arcade, this, and this is what I was going to say, it's a bad game, but in the context of an arcade, it becomes a different beast. Right. The, f- the fact that we are able to play it without worrying about our pocket is... Made a huge it difference. changes things Definitely. Cons- considerably. Also, the thing that we haven't mentioned, and we are we are really getting to the end, we're going to have to wrap up, but the thing that we haven't mentioned... <sighs> Lordy Lordy. ...was the fact that it's a four-player game in the mm. arcade, and that the... So you, you could theoretically be down in the arcade with, with three of your friends playing Without through three this... Friends. Well, yeah, this was my problem as well. I had me and my cousin, so it was a two-player game. But you, you could, the, in theory, you could bandy your family together. Yep. March down there and have a right good old jolly on Simpsons as a foursome. That's and that sounds great. That does. That does sound great. But that's not how you're going to experience it in this day. No. I no. can't imagine getting for... the family gathered around an no. arcade machine no. in Whitby or whatever to play on that. The other thing is, I don't think people would want to play through it more than once. No. The no. novelty is good one, one time through. But that's about as much as it stands up to. Yeah. So, we're not recommending it, necessarily. Other than to Die Hard Simpsons fans. Other than to, yeah. And that's Die Hard Simpsons yeah. fans. Or people that like me that played it when they were kids and they've got to finish it. They can now. Yeah. Easily. There you go. I need to bring a good game. Like an, like an indisputably good game next time. Well, fingers crossed for next time it's your turn, you will do. I look forward to it. I'm trying to be nuanced, but... Yeah, so it's, it's not quite wasted on me, yeah, isn't it? Fair enough. All right. So next time then. Right. Well, fun. Cool. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you. Bye. Bye. This gameware is a Specky Two Guys production. Music for the episode is provided under Creative Commons license by Stevia Sphere from the album Cell Division, which can be found at steviasphere.bandcamp.com.